Hi guys, welcome back to Homeschool Chickens. It is fall here in Kansas and it is back to school time. So I wanted to give you a tour of our schoolroom and show you how we set up school each year that works well for our family. So as we do this tour, I want you to keep in mind that there are so many different ways to homeschool. We are blessed to have a finished basement and we use that as our schoolroom, but you by no means have to have an entire room dedicated just to school. You can do it at the kitchen table, you can do it in bedrooms, you can do it on the go at libraries or in coffee shops. There's lots of different ways of doing this. And we've done it lots of different ways over the years, but these are some of the things that we've done that seem to work well for our family. So this is the main part of our school area. We've got a couple couches here. This is where we do all of our reading. We do a lot of reading. So we've got these two couches and they're separated from the other part of the room by some cubes so that you can have a little bit of privacy while you read. Over here is one set of bookshelves that we have. The top are novels that my big boys, my middle schoolers go through. The bottom shelf is completely empty. That is where we keep all library books. Our library books tend to get mixed up in all our other shelves of books. So my boys know whenever you have a library book, you, it goes back on that shelf. That way we don't get those lost in finds. These over here are fabric scraps, pipe cleaners, toilet pool, toilet paper rolls, all things for them to be creative and build and make whatever their heart desires. Over here on this half of the couch, we've got the cubbies. Um, these have a lot of activities for my elementary age boys. We have marble run, we have music. This is his little caddy that he grabs. It's got his scissors, glue, crayons, pencils, all the things he needs, and then craft supplies. And right back here on the wall, these shelves, I keep uh, subjects that they're gonna be studying that year. So last year we did an astronomy, subject, a human body unit, and a seed unit. So it just has materials that they can play with on their own that make those units more exciting. Um, like here's a little stuffy that also has to do with the cell body. Um, and then just different things that they can get their hands on and they can play with and experience each of those units on their own. We do it in the curriculum as well, but these I keep stocked that they can play with whenever they like. On the other side of the wall is where the teaching portion gets done. Over there is reading, over here is teaching. There's lots of different ways to set up desks. It tends to work really well in our family for us all to be at one large table together. So I've got all the chairs here. I've got a boy who's got some ADHD, so he sits on this um, and he's got his little uh, poppet here. But I do most of the teaching here where I can teach multiple children at the same time. Um, back here, I have our printer and then another section for my middle schooler. He does some online classes. So it's got his headphones over here, his laptop and his own private space that's a little separated for when he's doing his own work over there. A few key things for the desk area. This is where I sit, the table where I sit and teach them. This bookshelf here is it has a shelf for each boy and all the books that they're currently using. So whenever I'm ready for math or history, I can just grab that book off that shelf and teach. And that keeps those close by so I'm not running around the room looking for those. Another thing that I have right here is a whiteboard. I have the one right behind me. And during the school year, we do put agendas and schedules up there for the boys. But this little whiteboard is extremely handy to be able to grab and work out a math problem or show the difference between B and D, whatever it is my boys are going through at that time. Having this nearby is very helpful. And then while I'm, sit while I'm sitting here at the desk behind me over here is one of our maps. We've got maps all over and globes hanging. And even if you look up at the ceiling, we even have formula charts up on the ceiling. So we really utilize every bit of space that we can out of this room. I wanted to talk about a couple things that make homeschooling way easier, especially if you're homeschooling multiples. This crate here is what I use to keep my younger child busy when I'm doing work with my older child. Sometimes I'm able to give him a worksheet or reading assignments and he does great with those. Other times he doesn't do so great. So he knows he has this crate and it is full of stuff that can keep him busy. They're called busy boxes. 
We have mazes, we have puzzles, we have workbooks, we have light brights. This is a magnet puzzle where you can do lots of different magnets. We have diamond painting, all sorts of educational games to keep them busy and occupied while I'm working with their sibling. The other thing is reading boxes. These are boxes, each kid has their own box and it has all sorts of books that are at their reading level in it. And they get, and a candy jar. This is full during the year. They get to decorate their own candy jar. I refill it once a month. As long as they are reading from this box, they get to have their candy. And that helps instill that love of reading when they associate something sweet with the books. This half of the room, we have, this is a basketball goal. Most of the time during the school day, it is folded up. I will pull it down at lunchtime or in the afternoon if it's rainy or if they're getting really excited and they need some motivation to be able to sit still and get their work done, then I'll say we can pull that down for 10 minutes if you guys can get through so much work. And so that's a good motivator, that basketball goal. Right up there in the corner, we have a TV. I do utilize that a lot. YouTube has awesome educational videos, so I have a Chromecast and I just cast the videos to there and that'll give a more in-depth with whatever we're learning about, whether it's Greek mythology or the pyramids or whatever. There's so many educational videos that I can cast up there. Right underneath that is actually a rabbit hutch. That's our class pet. Uh, he's out during the day when we're here. The, the hutch is open. He's running around with us. I've got some pictures coming up of us just kind of having him do school with us. Um, he does get locked up in the hutch at night because he will chew up all of our book work. He'll even eat the carpet. So if we're not here with him, he does get locked up. All right, these are some of our main bookshelves that where I store a lot of activities for the kids. Here's all their science stuff. We've got a science caddy here that's got microscopes and goggles and um, slides, all sorts of stuff that they can grab this and head outside. And here's more microscopes, binoculars, all sorts of stuff in the science. Here's some educational DVDs. Those are like pop circuits and robot building. When they build robots, I stick them up here for display. Um, here's more educational games. Here is like magnets and laser mazes. Um, here's Play-Doh. Um, I use a lot of cookie cutters and they can make different letters. Um, letters and shapes in the Play-Doh when they're real little to help them have a tactile way of learning those shapes. Here's some of our math multiples. Down on the bottom we have coloring books and puzzles. These are all our educational books and then Dr. Seuss and some novels down there. And that's a quick tour of our schoolroom. It's pretty straightforward. I try to have it organized. It makes our school day flow much better. Uh, but again, there are so many different ways to do homeschool. This is the way that works well for my family and my boys. We usually tweak it every year depending on how old they are. When they're real little, I make that whole section with the basketball goal and the rabbit hutch. That's like a preschool area. But as I don't have any preschoolers, we've changed it into something else. So feel free to change and be fluid and make your room fit whatever your needs are for your family. If you have one child, it's going to look very different than if you have four or a dozen kids. Um, but just know that there's lots of different ways to do it. Be flexible, forgive yourself, have mercy on yourself, and make sure to have fun.